How are we doing, VC? Mr. Boulder here. I hope everyone's good and hope everyone's doing well. This week, we're going to talk about my uh, Megadeth vinyl collection. Um, very important band for me growing up. Um, one of my favourite bands still now to this day. Um, yeah, they must have the reason I started playing guitar. So um, they've definitely got a, a place in my heart for sure. Um, yeah. Dave Mustaine's the reason I started playing guitar. I remember seeing the Holy Wars video on um, Noisy Mothers. If you're from the UK, you'll remember that program. It was like the only sort of rock and metal program on TV back in the day before the internet. It was on at like 2 o'clock in the morning on a Friday night or something silly like that. Yeah, after I saw that, that's what made me want to play guitar. And that's the reason I play a um, King V Jackson like uh, Dave Mustaine used to. So yeah, big, important band for me. So we're going to talk about uh, my Megadeth vinyl collection right now. So here we go. First up, of course, is the debut, King of My Business from 85. As I said in my very first video, um, my favourite debut from the, the Big Four. I absolutely love this album. I love just how raw and angry it is. Um, not the best production because I think I spent a lot of the money on the drugs um, when they made this. But this is a great album. Um, I love the uh, the cover of Nancy Snarch's These Boots Are Made For Walking on this. Um, mechanics, yeah, I like that. I do prefer The Four Horsemen, though, on uh, Metallica's Kill Em All. And uh, Mechanics on this, probably the best song on the album. I absolutely love it. It's just so vicious and nasty. Um, brilliant stuff. Chosen Ones is great. Title Track's great. Love You To Death. Perfect album. Definitely my favourite of uh, debut from the Big Four. I absolutely love this. Nice picture disc edition. Fantastic stuff. Um, yeah, so Mustaine, Dave Ellison, Gar Samuelson, and Chris Poland from the original lineup. Fantastic stuff. Uh, this is the reissue that came out a couple of years ago. One of the few reissues I really would recommend picking up. This is absolutely fantastic. Um, been remixed and everything everything sounds really clear like the double kick drums really stand out clearly whereas they didn't really on the, the original release um yeah a lot of times albums are repackaged and they say that they've been remixed and everything and they don't really sound very different but this one really does sound fantastic highly recommend it if you haven't picked it up yet really really worth uh, checking out excellent debut album absolutely love it um Listen to it loads and loads still now. Um, so yeah, Megadeth Kids is my business from 85, I think it is. Excellent debut album. Absolutely love it. Yeah, great stuff. Noji Press of uh, Peace Sells But Who's Buying. Another really, really good album. Again, listen to this so much. Back in the day, I can remember my mate um, at school had this. Um, I think he did me a copy on cassette, as, as he used to back in the day. A fantastic album. Just The Open and Wake Up Dead is one of my favourite Megadeth songs. Uh, the Conjuring, great. Title track's fantastic. Um, Devil's Island as well, side one. Absolutely killer. Side two starts off with a Good Morning um, Black Friday. Excellent stuff. Uh, Bad Omen, really good. I ain't superstitious. Not too fussed about that, to be fair. And ends with, um, what's it called? My Last Words. This is a killer album. Again, the same uh, lineup that made the debut. Really, really good stuff. Um, I must say, not listened to it in full for a while, but um, I think I need to put that right soon. Um, great album. Really, really good. Fantastic stuff. Up next is, um, obviously, So Far So Good So What. This was my first Megadeth album. got this on cassette back in 88 when I was 11 uh, for Christmas. Um, a few weeks ago, um, I think it was Mel Mickey posted about this on um, Instagram. And I thought to myself, yeah, I've not listened to that all the way through for absolutely ages. And I've always considered it not to be one of their best. And I think the problem with that is because it's sandwiched in between two absolute classics like um, 
obviously peace sells but who's buying and rust in peace and i always thought yes yeah, it's, it's nowhere near as good as those but when i relived it re-listened to it again it was much better than i remember it being actually um i was been a bit hard on it in the past Great instrumental it kicks off with Into the Lungs of Hell, um, Into Set the World of Fire. Not too fussed on the cover of the Pistols, Anarchy in the UK. It's okay. Uh, Mary Jane, last track. Again, okay. Side B is where it's at for me. 502, In My Darkest Hour, one of Megadeth's best songs, which is uh, I believe is about Cliff Burton passing away. Liar, brilliant stuff. Hook in mouth, brilliant stuff. Um, yeah, this uh, was with... Um, is it Chris Young, I think, on guitar? No, Jeff Young on guitar and Chuck Bear on drums. Um, not the most uh, legendary Megadeth lineup, but a really good album, yeah. I um, I didn't give it the credit it really deserved, and when I revisited it, um, I realised um, it was much better than I remembered it being. Um, yeah, my first Megadeth album, really, really good stuff. Next is a bit of a stop gap in between albums. This is the uh, No More Mr. Nice Guy single, which was uh, released for the Wes Craven film, Shocker. Uh, obviously, a uh, Alice Cooper cover. Love the original. Good cover on this as well. I think it's quite strange about this. Is uh, Obviously, it says Megadeth on the front, but um, the two songs on side B are not even performed by them. Yeah, Different Breed, uh, performed by Dead On. No idea who they are. And uh, Demon Bell um, is performed by Dangerous Toys, who are a really good uh, sleaze glam metal band from uh, the late 80s. Nice little piece to have in this collection. Um, yeah, good stuff. Really enjoy it. Everyone knows this. Beast of an album. Rust in Peace. A 10 out of 10. Absolute classic thrash metal album. Um, this was the start of the, uh, for me, the best lineup of Megadeth with uh, Mustaine, Ellison, Mike Freeman, and Nick Menza. Rest in peace, Nick. Died way too young. Brilliant album from start to finish. No bad songs on this. Um, Take No Prisoners, Tornado Assaults, Lucretia, Hangar 18, Holy Wars, Storm Patrol, etc., etc. Absolutely killer. This isn't an original, this is um I think this is a reissue anyway. Um it only cost me fifteen quid and I've seen um originals go on eBay for probably double that at least. Um yeah, try to grab an original but the bidding always just goes up way too much to a price I'm not prepared to pay. Stunning album, absolute classic, a thrash metal classic, just a metal classic in general really. If for some bizarre reason you haven't heard this and you like thrash, then um, I can't recommend enough that you pick it up. It's absolutely essential. Killer stuff. Rust and Peace from 1990. Showed this before. Lucky to have had this. Uh, Can I to Extinction. Saw this at a record fair quite a few years ago. And I couldn't whip it out of the crate fast enough because I think uh, the guy was only charging about £15. And I'm sure that you can get way more for it than that. Um... Sleeve is not in the best condition, but is in it's in great condition as far as I'm concerned. You know, it's not absolutely mint, but it will do. Um, record plays great. Probably the most important album of my life. Um, and I don't know why, for some reason though, I was just crazy on music. Well, after I heard this, me and my friend Glenn played this to death back in the summer of 1992. Killer stuff. Um, Symphony Destruction, first riff I learned to play on the guitar. So that's always got a special place in my heart. Um, yeah, Architect of Regression, um, Sweat and Bullets, Foreclosure of a Dream, Captive on the Ashes in Your Mouth. This is sort of like their Black album. I absolutely love it, so I'm sure that's when it started to turn some fans off when I was going down a more commercial road, like a lot of the thrash fans were back in the early 90s. Killer album, all killer, no filler, absolutely love it. I'm lucky to have it. And because this is when I was um, getting crazy on music back in the early 90s as a kid, I've got a couple of singles as well. Seven Inch of Skin of My Teeth. Um, nice stuff. Nice little piece to have. Side B is the General Schwarzkopf mix of um, Holy Wars. 
I haven't listened to it for years, but I think the only difference is there's a bit of a, an effect on the guitar. That's the only difference from the original version. Um, this has got the poster with it, um, which was like the board game, because there was a board game for this. You had to get the 10 inch as well for the other bits and pieces. There's the back. Yep, skin of my teeth, 7 inch. Nice stuff. Symphony Destruction, 12 inch. Um, love this. Great stuff. As you can see, clear vinyl. The B sides on this are fantastic. Sometimes bands will put out a B side and they'd be a load of crap, a load of demos and that, which I'm not, never really sort of interested in. But this is really good. The B sides on this is um, first one's called Breakpoint, which is a really good song. And the song on side B is called Go to Hell. And if you're not familiar with it and you're into Megadeth, then once again, I can't stress enough, you go and check it out immediately. I think it's one of their best songs. And um, how it never ended up on an actual album, I never know. If my memory's right, it was on the um, soundtrack to Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey. Absolutely essential song. It's one of their best. Absolutely brilliant. Yeah, that's the uh, Super Instruction 12 inch. Sweat and Bullets 12 inch. This is from 93, I think. Um, couple of live tracks and then like a nearly a 10 minute version of Symphony of Destruction the gristle mix it's okay far from essential though um, I'll get the bloody slew there we go blue vinyl and what's unusual about this is to play the record you have to start from the center and it plays outwards. Um, the only record I've ever had that does that. Very, very strange. Nice piece to have. I remember me and my friend, again, Glenn, both buying this at the same time. Love Sweat and Bullets, great song. One of the best on the album. Really enjoyed the video as well. When they're all in like the, um, looks like an asylum or something like that. Yeah, Sweat and Bullets from 93. This won't surprise you, but I don't have euthanasia on vinyl because it's very expensive. I've seen a couple of um, couple recently on eBay, and they've gone for about 150, 160 pounds, um, maybe even more. I did put in a cheeky bid of about 40 quid, but funny enough, you did not win. It's very, very rare and hard to come by, and if you want it, you're gonna have to pay serious money for it. We've got a couple of the singles: seven inch, the train of consequences. Nice labels, clear vinyl. Um, song on side B is called Crown of Thorns. Another good um, Megadeth B side. Still got the sticker that came with it as well. Nice little piece to have in the collection. A good song. Uh, if you're a guitar player and you look at the tablature of the uh, the song you were uh, looking and thinking, oh, that looks quite easy to play, but the rhythms of how they play it is bloody difficult. I've never even been able to uh, master it, but I've not tried a lot, but it's uh, not an easy one to play, that's for sure. Nice little piece, that. And this is the 12-inch uh, Trainer Consequences. Um, yeah, bunch of live tracks. Again, this is going to be hard to get out of sleep because this hasn't been out for a long time. All the music on one side, again, nice label. And it's all etched on uh, side B, if you can see that properly. That's a bit better. Yeah, so don't have the Euthanasia album. We've got these singles. Nice pieces to have in the collection. Um, I don't have cryptic writings on vinyl because again, it's like euthanasia. Very, very rare and expensive. I was uh, looking at one on eBay a while back. And I think it ended up going for something like 230 quid. And as much as I want it, 
I'm not paying that kind of money. Don't have risk on vinyl either. Um, for me, it's the weakest Megadeth album though, by a long shot. Still a few good songs on it. But yeah, missed that one on vinyl. So up next is uh, The World Needs a Hero from 2001. Nice reissue from a couple of years ago. Uh, not their best album, but some good stuff on it. Yeah, Disconnect, The World Needs a Hero, Moto Psycho. A thousand Times Goodbye, Recipe for Hate, Dread and a Fugitive Mind. The last track when. This isn't bad. Um, I saw them uh, when this was out. Um, this is a lineup for you. Um, Milton Keynes Bowl in 2001, ACDC headlining. Then it was The Offspring, uh, Queens of Stone Age, and Megadeth. So I got to see him with this lineup because um, this is with Al Petrelli on guitar from Alice Cooper's band. And Jimmy DeGrasso, I think I say so, he was the drummer in Suicidal Tendencies at one point. This one's not bad. Not too bad at all. Not their best, but not terrible. Not a skateboard. Lyrics, big old picture, the cover. Not bad, not essential, but worth having, I think. Systems failed from uh, 2004, I think. This was the first album um, Megadeth did after Dave Mustang had some real bad problems with his arm. I can't remember what happened, but he couldn't play guitar for ages, and at one point didn't know if he's going to play again. But fortunately, he got better, uh, made this. I think he did all the guitars and bass on this. I think that was just him and a drummer. This is a good one. Um, Black Mode Black Mode Universe, Die Dead Enough, and Kick the Chair. The opening three are worth the price of admission alone. This is better than the previous album, definitely. Again, a reissue from not too long ago. Nice package. Glad he's reissued because I'm pretty sure the originals are hard to get hold of. Um, not bad album at all, definitely worth having. Glad I've got it in the collection, that's for sure. United Abominations, I think this is from 2007. Um, yeah, one of the week at Megadeth albums for me. Um, but when I picked this up, I listened to it again. It was better than I remembered it being, to be fair. I really didn't think it was that great um, back in the day, but I listened to it again. And I was like, actually, I'm being a bit harsh. It's pretty good. Sleepwalker Washington is next. Call to Arms. Never Walk Alone. Gears of War. Not bad. Happy to grab it. Big Gatefold. Not one of their best, but I'm happy to have it in the collection. It's Megadeth, so I'm going to grab it. Even if it's not great, you know. 13 next. This is from a um, made a mistake. I'm pretty sure this was next. Endgame from 2009. I think it's 2009. Yeah, this was the best Megadeth album for a long time for me. This is probably the best one since Cryptic Writings. Really, really enjoy this one. This day we fight. 44 minutes, 1320, bodies, really, really good stuff. Um, this is Head Crusher as well, isn't it? Yeah, Head Crusher, probably the best song on the album. Really, really good. Best album for a very, very long time. I uh, can't remember who the lineup is on this. Big gay file picture of the band. I think that's James Lomenzo from what it used to be in White Line on bass. Um, one of the Drover brothers, can't remember which one is. Uh, one it is. Can't see. Um, yeah, good album that. Definitely one of the better ones from the sort of later period. I enjoy that one a lot. 13 next, um, yeah, it's okay, not one of the better ones. Sudden Death, Public Enemy number one, New World Order, the title track, Deadly Nightshade. Not bad, um, certainly not essential though, but I was happy to, when I saw this reissue to pick it up to plug a hole in the collection. 
but yeah, not one of the better Megadeth albums, but still probably quite good because they've never put anything really bad. Maybe Risk. This one gets a lot of stick, but I honestly don't know why. Super Collider, again, not the best, but it doesn't deserve the bad reputation it's got, and it has got a very bad reputation. But yeah, King Mader, King Maker, Super Collider, Dance in the Rain. And a good cover of uh, Thin Lizzy's Cold Sweat right at the end. Again, gatefold, looks nice. Yeah, Sean Drover on drums, Chris Broderick on guitar. They were probably the same guys on the previous album. I couldn't remember their bloody names. Yeah, this one gets a hell of a lot of stick. I don't think it really deserves its terrible reputation. It's it's good. Doesn't deserve the bad rap though. And of course that leads up to the last album, uh, Dystopia. Very good. I really, really enjoy this one. Very nice album. The threat is real. This type of fatal illusion. Um, Death from within. Lying in state, the emperor. Post American world. This is probably my favourite of the last twenty years. Uh, this is just about better than Endgame. game. This has got Chris Adler, who was in Lamb of God, on drums. Um, and I think this is Kiko's first album. Not going to try and pronounce his surname because I know I'll get it wrong. There's the inner printed inner lyrics on the other side. Good stuff, this and um, happy to have a nice picture disc version of this one too. That I picked up whilst out on holiday last year. The shop um, was mostly kind of um, sort of quite trendy music, sort of indie music, um, and they've had to find this by some miracle. Yeah, I really like this one. Um, hoping for a new album soon. Pretty much love everything they're going to put out. Like I said, the only one that isn't too great is a risk. But this is fantastic stuff. Um, out of the big four, the last albums that they've done, I think this is one of the better ones. Um, yeah, really good stuff. I love it. Um, so there we go. That's my Megadeth vinyl collection. Thanks for watching, guys. Um, Get in touch. Thanks to those who watch, subscribe, like. Um, it's great speaking to people um, so we can all talk about um, our passion, our music um, that we love so much. And I will see you next time. All right, guys, take care of yourselves. See you later. Bye bye.